In today's tutorial, I will show you how to highlight text in Adobe Premiere Pro. And in the second part of this tutorial, I'll show you how to make it more interesting by adding an on-screen look. And this includes a fake depth of field to help the viewer focus on the most important part. You could also use this same technique to present a screen recording. And let's zoom in in the program monitor so we can see what we're working on. And to do this, we first need to switch over to the rectangle tool, which you can find here. We can use this to draw a box and cover the first line of text. And then I'll move over to the essential graphics panel, and there I'm going to change the color of the box. In this case, I'll go for orange. Okay, color changed, but now there's a problem because the text is no longer visible. We can fix this by changing the blend mode in the effect controls panel. We'll need to change this one into multiply. This will show both the highlight color and the text. Keep in mind that if your text or background has a different color than this black and white, you might need to choose another blend mode. Okay, now it's time to animate the highlighting of the text. And to do this, we first need to change the anchor point. We can select this here in the effect controls panel and then this blue crosshair will appear in the program monitor. This crosshair represents the anchor point. We need to move this to the left side of the box. Next, I'm going to animate the scale width properties of the box or highlighted line. But before I can enable or do anything with this property, we first need to disable universal scale. Now I can enable keyframes by clicking on this stopwatch icon here. I'll move this first keyframe somewhere over here and then lower the value to zero and this will create the second keyframe. And with these two keyframes, we've now created this simple highlight animation. And to make it all a bit smoother, we're going to right click on the first keyframe and select ease out. Then right click on the second keyframe and then select ease in. And if you want to make this go faster or slower, you can play around with the timing of the keyframes. If you want to highlight a second line of text, you can simply duplicate the layer on the timeline by holding the Alt key combined with the left mouse button and then drag it one track up. Then make sure you've got the duplicated layer selected and move over to the effect controls panel. Now you can offset the highlight animation by moving the keyframes a bit forward in time. And of course, after that you need to change the position so it will highlight the second line of text. But what if the next lines are longer or shorter than the first one? Well, let me show you by making another duplicate and then move back to the effect controls panel. In there, make sure you've got the last scale with keyframe selected. And now you can extend the highlight line by simply increasing the value. And of course, I will also change the position so it will cover the right part of text and also offset the keyframes. Let's give it a playback to have a look at what we've got so far. Okay, now it's time to make this all a bit more interesting. First, I will extend the highlight layers on the timeline. And then I will nest all these layers to add some effects. I will select all the layers, then right click and select nest. Then give the nested sequence a name and click OK. And now we can add some effects. In the effects panel, I'll search for the basic 3D effect. Let's apply this one to the nested sequence and then go back to the effects panel for the next effect. And that's the lens distortion effect. Also apply this one to the nest sequence and then go back to the effects panel and search for the last effect and that's the Gaussian blur effect. Also add this one to the nested sequence and then move over to the effect controls panel. And in there we're going to enable keyframes in the basic 3D effect for swivel and tilt. And we'll also enable keyframes for scale and position. Then I'll move a couple of frames forward and start changing the values for swivel and tilt. I think something like this should work for this tutorial, but of course you can use any viewing angle that you prefer. And now we can also zoom in by increasing scale values and also change the position. Ok perfect, we can now select the last set of keyframes, then right click and select ease in and then move these keyframes to the end. Then select the first set of keyframes, right click and select ease out and then move these keyframes to the beginning. And these keyframes together will give us the following animation. And in this case, minus 4 should be more than enough. 
I'll turn the effect on and off so you can see the difference. And in the final part we're going to add a bit of fake depth of field by using the Gaussian blur effect. First I will click on this create ellipse mask and then move over to the program monitor. Then I'm going to reshape this mask until it covers the part that we want to emphasize. And I'll increase mask feather and expansion by playing with these blue handles here. And then back inside the effect controls panel I'm going to enable the option for inverted because we want the blurriness to happen outside the mask, not inside. And then finally increase the blurriness until you've got something that looks like this. And that's all, let's have a look at the final results. If you want to know how you can save this as a preset, then watch the video that I'll link at the end of this one. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and if you did, then please like the video or leave a comment below. I would really appreciate that, and it also helps me to grow my channel. Anyway, that's it for today, thanks a lot for watching, and I wish you all a wonderful day.